Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to show you how to implement the action button within your notification. So this is the actual project that we have uh, used in the previous video in this uh, tutorial series. And if you haven't watched that video, be sure to check that out. Uh, anyhow, let me just uh, show you how our actual uh, action button will look like. So whenever we trigger this notification, uh, we are going to add this uh, simple notification uh, action button. And whenever we press that uh, button, uh, then we are going to trigger this uh, simple toast message. Okay? And uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first uh, thing uh, which uh, we want to do here, uh, we want to create here a uh, broadcast receiver. So let me just here create first a new package. For example, with the name of a uh, receiver. And inside this package, I'm going to create a new uh, Kotlin class uh, with the name of uh, my receiver. There you go. And now uh, this receiver uh, needs to uh, implement a broadcast a receiver class. There you go. And now here we have a warning because we need to uh, override one function, uh, which is called the onReceive. And the broadcast receivers, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, are mostly used to uh, receive some kind of a message from the Android system itself or from some other applications as well. And in our case, uh, we are going to receive that message uh, from our action button that uh, we are going to click in our notification. So here I'm going to just create here the logic. Let me just rename this parameter uh, to a context and this one to intent. So here I'm going to say uh, and create one variable actually named the message. And uh, within this uh, message variable, I'm going to call the intent so we can actually get uh, the string value that we're going to pass whenever we click our action button. So let's name, for example, that um, a key to be a message. There you go. Uh, then below that, I'm going to say if this uh, message is actually not null. So only in that case, I want to show here, for example, just a simple uh, toast message. So let's pass here the context as a first parameter. As a second one, uh, we're going to specify this uh, message string. And as a last one, just specify here toast dot uh, length long. Let's now show this uh, toast message. There we go. And this is how our actual uh, broadcast receiver uh, will look like. Now, the next thing we need to register this uh, broadcast receiver within our Android manifest file. So let's just here uh, add uh, one uh, uh, element here named receiver and let's specify our receiver class. There we go. So this uh, element needs to be inside uh, this application uh, parent. There we go. Now we can close that. We have created our receiver and now let's just focus on uh, implementing that uh, action button in our application or in our notification. So in this notification compad builder, uh, there is a function uh, which is called the uh, add action. And this add action function uh, will allow us to basically specify the action button in our notification and also the actual pending intent, uh, which will be used to trigger our broadcast receiver. So uh, for this uh, title, I'm going to specify uh, maybe just uh, action. So that will be the action or the title of our uh, action button. And the second parameter here uh, needs to be uh, the actual uh, pending intent. So let me just here uh, create that uh, pending intent. So first, uh, we need to create the actual intent. So uh, intent, let's uh, call the intent class. Here, I'm going to specify the context. Then the second parameter is the actual uh, receiver class. So uh, my receiver class.java, there you go. And now here, I'm going to just apply uh, one thing. So I'm going to put basically one string that we are going to receive in our uh, my receiver or uh, our broadcast receiver. So as a name, we need to specify the same key that we have already specified in our receiver. So there we go. And uh, as a, a message here or uh, as a value, I'm going to specify, for example, one uh, text that will say uh, clicked. All right. So that's our actual intent. Uh, now let's create here a pending intent. So a pending intent let's call here a pending intent dot um, get a broadcast because uh, we are using here a broadcast receiver uh, so first parameter is the context the second one is the request code for now i can just specify here a zero and the third parameter is the actual intent and the last parameter is uh, a flag so here um, 
as you can see when I type for example 0, so here now we're going to receive a, a warning saying that we need to actually implement and specify a pending intent mutability flag. So uh, if we try to run this application uh, without uh, specifying here uh, the actual uh, pending intent mutability flag, uh, then we are going to receive here an error. So let me show you here. I'm going to run this application now. And uh, let me just open up the locket. So as you can see, as soon as we launch this application, uh, we are going to receive here an uh, illegal argument exception saying that uh, targeting uh, S+, plus or a version 31 and above, requires that uh, one of uh, mutability flags like uh, immutable and immutable flags uh, must be specified when creating the pending intent. So it's uh, strongly considered uh, to use uh, this uh, flag immutable. So that's why it is important here to specify this uh, uh, flag immutable because uh, this uh, zero value will actually not work when using some uh, API levels that are actually greater than 31. In that case, if you run this code, uh, then your application will crash. So we can call here a pending uh, intent dot uh, flag uh, immutable, for example. And in that case, uh, we are going to receive here a message uh, saying that this actual uh, flag requires uh, API level M and the higher. So that's why I'm going to create here uh, one more variable, a uh, flag. And here I'm going to say uh, if uh, build.version.sdk uh, integer is greater than or equal to a build a version codes.m. So in that case, I'm going to here return a pending intent dot flag immutable and in other case I'm going to just return here uh, for example zero and now we can just specify this uh, flag right here perfect and we can now specify this uh, pending intent in this uh, add action function there we go and the first parameter here in this uh, function is also uh, this actual icon so I'll just specify here a zero because uh, we're not going to use uh, any icon all right, and now I think that we have everything we need to actually um, see the actual uh, action button in our notification. Okay, so now let's uh, run our application. And let's see uh, whether our uh, action button uh, will show up in the notification and if that uh, a logic in our broadcast receiver will actually work. Okay, so now let's just uh, trigger this notification. There we go, and we can see our action button. So now when I press this action button, uh, then you're going to see that this uh, toast message uh, will show up. Because in our broadcast receiver, we have specified that whenever we receive this uh, a message, and when that message is actually not null, we are going to trigger this uh, toast message. And as you can see from our notification module, uh, whenever we uh, basically press uh, our action button, with the name of our action, uh, then this uh, pending intent uh, will be triggered and we are going to send this uh, message to our broadcast receiver. Okay, so that's how it actually works. And of course, we can even close our application and trigger this action so it will work. As you can see here, even uh, without the actual application in our foreground, that uh, action uh, will still be triggered. There we go, so everything here works uh, perfectly fine. Alright, so now you have seen how to add a simple action button to your notification. You have also seen how to create your own uh, broadcast receiver and receive a message uh, as well. Now the important thing here to note is that uh, by the rules of a user experience and material design, it's uh, recommended to add a maximum of uh, three action buttons within your uh, single notification. So be sure to remember that. So uh, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video if you find it uh, helpful, of course. And uh, see the next one.